which consists of two resistors and two capacitors. This allows for a significant improvement in alias rejection. Now we have tone control functions, bass and treble regulation. Also we have uh, the noise reduction capability, especially the adaptive terrestrial function. The latest software release includes the ability to stream raw IQ data from the receiver to the PC. The data is taken after the FFT filter but before the demodulator. In this mode, the receiver appears as a stereo audio source with the left channel carrying I samples and the right ca channel carrying Q samples. The latest software introduces a frequency measurement feature that can make the calibration process easier. The receiver can be calibrated by tuning to an AM station with a known carrier frequency. Probably the most common method for generating quadrature oscillator is to use an SI5351 clock generator. The receiver now has support for, for an external SI5351 oscillator. This project is sponsored by PCBWay. Don't miss the PCBWay Christmas big sales from November 28th to December 31st. Get free Christmas coupons and redeem or check value a promo code. You can also start with PCB order for only $5. Up to 50% off for 3D printing and CNC machining and special sales in PCBWay stores. PCBWay has all the services to create your own project at the best price. Hello, a few months ago I presented you a wonderful SDR radio project by Dawson John 100 and one things. In short, it is a simple SDR radio with a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board. It has two displays, a small OLED for displaying the menu and frequency and a larger color TFT waterfall display. I'm, I made the device in a universal breadboard PCB and built into a suitable boxes. The box with the TFT display is from a previous project of mine, so I use it for this purpose. In the previously mentioned video you can see the method of making it, as well as a detailed description of the menu, functions and features of this receiver. Meanwhile, the project is being developed with the support of the community and today's version has significant improvements compared to the first alpha version. In this video I will present you those improvements in order. First improvement is the addition of another low pass filter between operational amplifier output and the microcontroller inputs which consist of two resistors and two capacitors. This allows for a significant improvement in alias rejection. Now, uh, the large TFT display with improved waterfall dynamics and characteristic retro scale is immediately noticeable. Uh, there have been some visible enchantments to the user interface including a retro style tuning dial and signal straight indicator. Behind the scenes the TFT driver has been extensively reworked to improve reliability and performance. I think this change is the biggest compared to the previous alpha version.
Oh. Now we have tone control functions, bass and treble regulation. Also we have uh, the noise reduction capability, especially the adaptive terrestrial function. The latest software release includes the ability to stream raw IQ data from the receiver to the PC. USB stream, raw IQ. The data is taken after the FFT filter but before the demodulator. In this mode, the receiver appears as a stereo audio source with the left channel carrying I samples and the right ca channel carrying Q samples. The audio hasn't been demodulated so you can't listen it to directly but it does allow compatibility with the range of the SDR softwares. The latest software introduces a frequency measurement feature that can make the calibration process easier. The receiver can be calibrated by tuning to an AM station with a known carrier frequency. Let's find this option. So we have gain calibration and frequency calibration. Uh, adjustable intermediate frequency, the latest firmware provides the ability to override the default IF settings, allowing the users to choose their own IF frequency and an option to change the behavior so that the NCO is always below the or above the dial frequency. So we can set EF frequency. Probably the most common method for generating quadrature oscillator is to use an SI5351 clock generator. The receiver now has support for, for an external SI5351 oscillator, which is not the case in, the, is the, in this particular device. We can find this option also in hardware config. external oscillator. Now is off position because I have not uh, used SI5351 oscillator in this case. During the video you can notice that the receive signal is relatively weak and the reason for that is that I was currently using a regular long wire antenna because I had a problem with my loop over ground antenna. For that reason I used 
this preselector, the making of which you can see in one of my previous videos. With the new retro style tuning dial and improved waterfall dynamics, the user interface is now as impressive as the receiver's performance. These visual upgrades paired with the new noise reduction and calibration features make this a must-build project for radio enthusiasts.